my angels, it's Haley Reese. I hope that you guys are having an absolutely fantastic night or day or morning, whatever it is. I am so excited today because I'm finally gonna be diving into one of the most chilling unsolved mysteries, the Black Dahlia. This video has been so incredibly highly requested from you guys, and so many of you have asked me my thoughts on this specific case, who I think did it, and if I lean towards any theories. So I thought that we would just take a look at the entire case, look at the suspects, and everything that occurred. So without further ado, let's just get right on into today's video, but don't forget to leave me requests down below if there's any other unsolved mysteries you guys want me to cover here on my channel, because I really do enjoy doing these types of videos, and I would love to do some more for you if you enjoyed, of course. So leave your comments down below, any requests that you have, and let's get into the unsolved mystery of the Black Dahlia. So on January 15th, 1947, a mother walking with her child stumbled across what I can only assume to be one of the most gruesome scenes you could find. During her walk in a Los Angeles neighborhood, she stumbled across the body of a young woman that was completely naked and sliced clean through the center. This body was just a few feet away from the sidewalk and was posed in such a way that at first, this woman believed she stumbled across a mannequin. However, when she looked a little bit closer, she realized that it was in fact a human body that had been drained of all of its blood and cut at the waist. Despite this extensive mutilation that had been done to the body, there was no blood at the scene, really indicating that she had been killed elsewhere and then brought there to be found. She also had been cut from her mouth to her ears, creating this everlasting smile that almost resembled like the Joker. It was so horrible, you guys. This young woman turned out to be 22-year-old Elizabeth Short, who was nicknamed the Black Dahlia. Now she actually went by the name Beth, but I gained the nickname the Black Dahlia due to the fact there had been a movie that came out called The Blue Dahlia, and she wore a ton of black, so she had been nicknamed the Black Dahlia. Now, like I said, she'd actually moved to Los Angeles in pursuit of an acting career and initially had moved in with her father. Now, her and her father had a really rocky history. In 1929, he'd actually abandoned her and her family by faking his suicide, but eventually actually sent her a letter and they began to communicate and she found it within her to forgive him while other members of her family did not. Now in these letters and in their communication, he told her that he'd now moved to Los Angeles. So she decided since she was in pursuit of this acting career and she really wanted to become a big star, she would move in with her father. Now this didn't last very long considering her father started realizing or feeling like she was actually freeloading off of him and using him and apparently she was really messy and the two just did not work well together. So she ended up moving out of her father's home and began kind of jumping between where she would live. One thing I should know is that anybody that she moved in with really noticed that she was in fact kind of a freeloader. She would move in with these people and she wouldn't contribute very much. So a lot of people really didn't enjoy living with her. Now when they found her body, her prints actually appeared twice in the FBI's database. Firstly, because of a job she had applied for, and secondly, due to being arrested for underage drinking. They actually had her mugshot in the files and those were leaked to the press as well. So right away, they began testing her to basically see if there was any sort of indication that she had been raped. Nothing within the evidence or within their testing showed any sign of rape, but this crime was really personal in the sense that this individual had left her naked, cut up and mutilated in a space where this person or this killer knew that she would be discovered. Her body wasn't in any way, shape or form placed in a, such a way that people wouldn't find it. In fact, the crime scene was really made to be found. Nine days after the discovery of her body, they received an envelope with a kind of note that was really just cut out letters so there was no handwriting. I should also note the note was actually also drenched in gasoline because apparently this removes your fingerprints from this specific note and it was a way to hide the identity of whoever had sent it. The note read, Los Angeles Examiner and other Los Angeles papers. Here is Dahlia's belongings, letter to follow. And along with the note, they found her social security card, her birth certificate, some of her own photos, and an old address book with certain pages missing, which I find to be really weird. After this, they would actually receive a handwritten letter that said, here it is. Turning in Wednesday, January 29th, 10 a.m. Had my fun with police, 
Black Dahlia Avenger but nobody ever actually turned themselves in. Now this case has remained a mystery to date. However, there were three primary suspects that people really believe could have had something to do with her death. Actually, one of which gives me chills and I really have a strong feeling that perhaps he may have had some involvement, but these are the three primary suspects. The first suspect was a man by the name of Robert Manley. There are many people who believe that the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles was the last place that Elizabeth was seen alive. Interestingly enough, Robert Manley had been the one that had dropped Elizabeth off at that hotel. Now, Robert Manley was actually married and had a family of his own, and he claimed that he and Elizabeth never had any sort of romantic relationship, that they'd never slept together, that there was nothing there other than a friendship. He claimed that the night he dropped her off at the hotel, the two of them had went to dinner and they had slept separately. Then he claims the last place that he saw her alive was in the hotel lobby, and she was making phone calls, I believe, and that was the last time that he had actually seen her. Later, they would discover that he'd actually returned to San Diego a week prior to her body being found, and he passed a polygraph test, so he would be ruled out as a suspect. In 1954, he would be admitted to a mental hospital, so this all really took a complete toll on him, though he remains his innocence throughout it all. The second main suspect was a man by the name of Joseph Dumais. Now, a couple days before the discovery of Elizabeth's body, he was admittedly blackout drunk with her in San Francisco. He would actually go on to admit to the murder of Elizabeth Short, but it was later proven that that was completely wrong. He had falsely confessed. He was checked in at his military base at the time of her death, so that was a complete false confession. Evidence would rule him out as a suspect. The third suspect is perhaps the most chilling, and that is a man by the name of George Hodel. George had 11 different children with five different wives. And interestingly enough, one of his children, his son named Steve, actually believes that his father is completely responsible for the death of Elizabeth and actually went as far as trying to prove the guilt of his father. Now his son Steve was actually five at the time of her death, but he would grow up to work as a detective and believe that his father was truly guilty therefore trying to prove the guilt of his father. Now, George went to medical school and studied surgery. His son, Steve, actually also said that he had a room in the home that the children were never allowed to see or go into, and they have no idea to this day what that room was. His son also apparently found pictures within one of his dad's photo albums of what he believed to be Elizabeth. These images were studied and analyzed and got two different results. Back when they first did the study, they came to the conclusion that these images were 85% not Elizabeth. While a study done more recently actually concluded that it was 90 to 95% Elizabeth. His son also went on to argue that the handwriting of his father was very similar to the handwriting of the handwritten note they received. But the results for analyzing the handwriting of his father was actually inconclusive as well. They weren't able to tell if it was or wasn't. While a listening device was actually placed within George's home during the investigation, he was heard saying, and I quote, supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia, they couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. If that's not the most chill thing. Getting even creepier, his son Steve actually returned to their childhood home with cadaver dogs. The cadaver dogs picked up the scent of death and soil samples that would be taken from back behind the house came back positive for human remains as well, which doesn't actually play into the case of the Black Dahlia because she wasn't buried there, but it leads people to believe that perhaps he may have been a murderer and that other people may have been killed. Now at this time, the LAPD was actually really corrupt and a lot of people have theories surrounding how he never got charged for the death of Elizabeth Short. Some people actually believe that the LAPD had been covering for George, while others think that George paid off the LAPD. In 2003, the LA District Attorney actually said, based on the results of Steve's investigation, I would have no reservations about filing two counts of murder against George Hodel. The case remains closed to this day. Those were really the only three suspects that stuck and people really thought may have had something to do with it. And absolutely nobody knows what really happened to the Black Dahlia. I think it is just so sad to think that a 22 year old who had her whole life ahead of her was so brutally murdered and never received any justice for that crime. I'm 22 years old right now, and to think of somebody doing what they did to her to me is just a horrifying thought. I mean, obviously, but just to think that we were the exact same age at the time of this crime, and to think about the fact that her body 
laid mutilated in the middle of a neighborhood, completely naked and exposed, and they never found out who did it. A lot of people think this case is just a true testament to how the LAPD operated back then in comparison to how they operate now. Many, many, many people believe if this case had happened today, in our day and age now, it would have been solved. But because of the resources they had back then, her family just never saw any justice for it. What do you guys think of this specific case? Who do you think committed the crime? Do you think it was any of the main suspects or do you believe it may have been somebody else? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness and until tomorrow, I love you guys.